These days I'm splitting my work across my iPad and my spangly new MacBook Pro 14 inch for increasingly long work from home sessions. And I've been working from home a lot recently. Yeah. Well, it turns out that one of the best tools you can invest in for a healthier and more productive workflow is, of course, an external display. Nothing beats that extra real estate of a juicy 4K monitor. The problem is, as a slightly design-obsessed Apple fanboy, finding a good-looking, high-spec display with one cable connection for both my iPad and laptop is difficult. Unless you have $6,000 to throw an Apple XDR wall, and well, I don't. Problem. Hi everyone, it's Simon. Welcome or welcome back to Better Creating. This month I've been delving into the world of productive desk setups uh, to come up with this half review, half checklist guide for choosing the right external display for a productive and creative workflow. Let's check off design and build, display and color, connectivity and usability. And by the end of this video, you'll know the perfect MacBook monitor checklist. So after a lot of searching, I found these. BenQ's PD lineup of Pro monitors. They are Mac focused, great looking, high quality 4K panels that have multi input support, pro quality color accuracy, and pleasing user interface. All for the fraction of the cost of that Pro XDR monitor. So, have BenQ solved my creative productivity problems and ticked my list off? Well, kind of. This is the BenQ PD2725U Pro 4K display. I attempted to buy it last year and due to the pandemic issues, as you might expect, it was almost impossible to find one. Perhaps more annoyingly, its available sister, the PD3220U, was just a bit too big for my compact desk space, but it's a great option with practically identical specs if size matters to you. Anyway, I DM'd BenQ and hey, they sent me this one to try out. Legends, but they have no sign off on the content and these opinions are very much my own. My links to all the monitors we're gonna mention in this video are in the description below if you wanna check them out. First off, this is by far the best looking 4K monitor I've seen in a long time. With a clean and minimal design that lives up to Apple's design aesthetics, finding a monitor with 360 bezels all the way around is much harder than you would think. This monitor just makes me want to sit and work at it, and that's got to be a great start for getting things done at home. The headline specs, it's a 27 inch 4K IPS panel with a 60 Hertz refresh rate, Thunderbolt 3 connectivity, excellent color accuracy, and extensive range as well of user settings and software extras. It's ticking a lot of boxes. Out of the box, you can tell that this is a premium build quality. Comparing it to some notable and cheaper 4K alternatives like the Dell U2720Q or the LG Ultrafine options, particularly that Ergo 4K with the good stand, this just had the edge on design and build quality nonetheless. Whilst it is quite a thick unit, mostly due to the power brick being built into the body, at least you don't have to put it elsewhere, I think that that space grey industrial look, super thin bezels and minimal branding just look awesome. Setup is easy, the high quality all metal base just screws together in seconds. You hook the panel on with the universal vessel mount and you are good to go. I think this is a great quality stand and most people will love it. There's also good adjustability and the monitor will even sit vertically for you writers and coders out there who want that option. That said, as my desk is on the smaller side, I'm finding that the base takes up a little too much space. It's not a big issue for me, but I think I'll be adding a third party monitor arm for some more space saving on the desktop. BenQ actually sent me their latest PD 34 inch ultra wide before this one by mistake, or maybe they were just being super generous. Probably. Either way, I'm sticking to the monitor that actually fits on my desk. On that note, I'll be sharing a ton of other productive and creative kit and a 2022 desk setup video on the channel soon. So make sure to subscribe while you're here. Let's talk about monitor size. I think the sweet spot for monitors is 27 inches. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For me, it's enough space whilst not having to make you move around too much uh, when you're finding things on a 32 inch monitor. Some creators might really enjoy the value of that 32 inch space for editing or productivity. And if you can fit an ultra wide like the 34 inch, it could be a great option for you. It's a wide version essentially of that 27 inch monitor that will be great for multitasking but be aware with these wider screens you'll get those really wide black bars either side of content when you're watching 16 by 9 videos or whatever and even more if you are hooking up an iPad like I do 
And so this monitor was the sweet spot for connecting multiple inputs. And the first thing you notice is, wow, that picture quality is excellent. The slightly matte finish to the screen really helps to minimize reflections and looks pretty cool too, I think. It's a feature you should look for in any monitor. Being an IPS panel as well, you are also gonna get the best of both worlds in terms of both responsiveness and it's still looking good from tighter viewing angles. And since this supports 95% of the DCI P3 and Display P3 color gamut and 100% of the sRGB and Rec. 709 gamuts, this is gonna be a great choice for you creatives and editors among us. You can't do much better. I've been particularly impressed with the range of display profiles on offer here, particularly the dedicated MBook profile that really matches well to the XDR display on my 14 inch MacBook. A cool feature for creators who value color quality is also the dual view mode on the BenQ monitor where you can split the screen by color modes down the middle. So if you wanna see how your content will look on a range of picture profiles and monitors, this is brilliant. With a 60 hertz refresh rate, it's smooth and pretty standard for good 4K panels, but it's probably not for the serious gamers out there. You're gonna want higher refresh rates. But to be fair, we don't really need any more on these MacBook Pros, given that their 120 hertz ProMotion displays are then limited to 60 hertz when you put them through an external monitor. It's not gonna be the best monitor though for super bright spaces, given that the peak brightness only reaches 400 nits in HDR mode. But for me, it's easily been enough. I mean, this is quite a bright room and I'm yet to use the monitor turned up to full. So don't worry too much about that. And oh yeah, HDR10 compatibility is pretty cool to see here too. The best thing about this display for MacBook users has to be that powered Thunderbolt 3 input. The holy grail of connectivity, meaning you can connect everything on your desk to your computer with a single cable, making it super portable. The PD displays have not one, but two Thunderbolt 3 ports, one offering 65 watts power delivery, perfect for my MacBook Pro 14 inch, and the other with 15. Connect a Thunderbolt dock, and get super high speed file transfers through the one cable setup. Or as I'm doing at the moment, you could actually just use the monitor as a hub in its own right, given that you can connect devices, hard drives, peripherals with the additional USB 3.1 hub that's included. It has one upstream and two downstream ports. And the cherry on top, the USB socket will actually power my Fuji camera as a webcam when I'm using it, gold. There's also a display port and two HDMI ports, meaning you have plenty of space to connect other devices alongside your main computer. And perhaps most impressively, a built-in KVM switch. Simply put, this allows you to connect a mouse and keyboard via the USB dongle, and then have them work across two devices when you switch inputs. Pretty cool. So for you iPad, Mac, PC crossover users, this monitor is actually a great option. The display also works with BenQ's excellent Display Pilot app, which has a ton of features to control your display, including color profile presets for specific apps, loads of cool stuff, laying out your desktop, windows, all of that. And I'd love to show you how great it is, but it currently doesn't support the new M1 Max. Right, disappointing. That said, we do get their nicely designed Hockey Puck G2. It has three preset buttons, a little dial, which is also a button, and I really like it. I've set the dial to brightness and the buttons to color profiles for Rec. 709 for video editing, MBook mode for general use, and the, the kind of eye-saving blue light mode, which is really good for that late night web surfing. Showing my age there a bit, aren't I? <laughs> to be honest, the on-monitor controls are so good to use, I might just scrap the Hockey Puck and keep my desktop nice and clean. So for me, the checklist for the perfect MacBook monitor runs as follows. A minimal aesthetic, avoiding that hashtag plastic gate look. Good ergonomics and adjustability. A 4K IPS display with HDR compatibility and have a high refresh rate. Accurate color profiles for all that content creation work. On connectivity, it's a must. It has one cable connection with direct charging from Thunderbolt 3 or 4 ideally. And it should work as a hub for some external storage. Usability wise, easy to use with multiple devices. So this monitor has almost ticked the boxes on my checklist for a good monitor. And that's pretty impressive. Although at this price point, you should probably be expecting that. 
I think it's a great choice for design-loving Mac users wanting great quality kit without the Pro XDR price tag, Mac and PC users looking for a good-looking productivity powerhouse to use that Pro quality colour, you'll also be super happy. If this is a step too far or you want to spend a little bit less, check out LG's excellent 27 and 32 inch Ergo Ultrafines or some of those high spec, perhaps less well built, but excellent connecting Dell offerings. My affiliate links are below if you want to grab one of those. You should watch this video next for more great tools and tech to help you stay productive and creative. It would be great if you left some comments and awesome if you subscribed. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.